Um, but one of the first things I learned playing rugby was teamwork. Um, and I think this is something that you can't, you can't, you can learn in the classroom or in a school setting, but it's something you learn at a deeper level when you play sport, because you actually learn that if I don't have this guy next to me, I can't win, or I can't go forward, I can't pass the ball. Um, and you actually learn to trust people. And I think that's what teamwork is for me personally. I think teamwork is trusting the person next to you, trusting them to do their job, uh, to back you up when, when it's needed. And having that trust actually helps me when I, when I, when I got into the corporate education business. I had a team of 40 people working below me, uh, running many different projects. And if I, I've seen managers where if they don't trust their employees, what they do is they micromanage. And if they start micromanaging, everything falls apart. It's people get angry, they don't, you know, it's just chaos. And I think that's a big part of what made me uh, who I am is through sport I learned teamwork. Uh, the second thing I learned uh, was actually determination. And this is actually based on teamwork as well. Uh, because you're a team, what really helped me was I didn't want to let my friend down. I didn't, let, I didn't want to let my teammates down. So basically, it gave me determination to try my best. And that actually is carried on to life. For me, when I try something, it's all or nothing. Uh, I have a philosophy where, why try something if I'm not going to give 100%? And that's actually led to, I'm going to tell you later, about how I became a bobsled and scales and jury member. Uh, and next, this is actually very important, it's success. It doesn't matter how bad your team is, if you play any sport, there will be that one time where you will win. And the, the if your team's horrible, I've actually played in a rugby team in Korea where we've only won one game in five years. But, I'm going to tell you now, that one game where we won was like the best feeling in my life. Like, I've won state championships, didn't compare. Uh, sport gives you the taste of success. And once you have success, you want it more. And that actually leads on to determination as well. But the most important thing sport taught me was not success, it's actually this one. It's failure. Sport teaches you that, look, even if you lose, you can get back up again, and you can win. Uh, my wife is actually a nurse at one of the bigger hospitals in Korea, and she told me this story once. She said, hey Aaron, uh, did you know in Korea, like, doctors have uh, like a crazy high uh, suicide rate? And I was like, what? That can't be right. Doctors? Suicide? Why would they commit suicide? Uh, and then she explained this story, and it kind of clicked. It was... In Korea, if you're a doctor, you've actually, like, since you're a little kid, you've been number one at whatever you've done in academics. You've been best in your elementary school, you've been best in high school, in college you've been the best, you've always been the best. But what happens is, they've studied until they're 35, 40, and then they've taken their first big step in life, and they've borrowed money and opened a hospital, a small hospital. And as with any business, some people <coughs> succeed, some people fail. And the doctors that fail, a lot of them end up committing suicide because this is the first time they've failed in their life. Uh, and that kind of hit me, and I was like, oh wow, yeah, that actually makes sense. And that's what sport teaches you. It teaches you, look, you will lose. It doesn't matter if you're the best sportsman in the world, in whatever sport you play, you will lose. And that will make you a better person. And for me, I think that's affected how I deal with my life. Uh, I don't. To be honest, I, I don't get stressed that often. Um, it's, it's something that does, like I run multiple projects at one time, and for the Olympics, I guarantee 40% fail, for one reason or another. Uh, but I look at 60%, and I'm happy with that, because nobody's perfect. So I think this is uh, some of the stuff that you can learn for sport. And the last one, actually, is the most important one, and leads on to, uh, my second part of the speech, it's confidence. You learn success, you learn failure. You, you're confident. You're confident to do anything. You're confident to go out, try anything, because if you fail, it does not matter. It does not matter. So I think these are some of the benefits of sport that you guys uh, can have.
And I really hope that you guys do play sport. Um, it doesn't have to be competitive, just fun, because you will gain some of these skills that will lead to a successful career in whichever path you think. Uh, so let's go to the second part of my speech. It's about experience, actually, and this is um, really important. Um, I know a lot of you guys are preparing for college applications. Maybe soon you will be. And I know when I was applying for Boston University, the important part of the application was uh, just extracurricular activities. What extracurricular activities you, you do, what volunteer activities you do. Um, and to me, I think I understand why schools want this. It might be different from what you think. But it's actually, if you do these extracurricular activities, you gain experience outside the classroom. And that experience leads to bigger and better things. Um, the main reason why I actually joined the military was for the experience. And the one thing that I gained from the military, and it was horrible by the way, uh, was, wasn't fun. Uh, no, I shouldn't say that. It, it was okay for the Korean guys. You were, you were having a good time. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think uh, when I joined the military, uh, they. I think every Korean male, they kind of, not every, so a lot of Korean males, they want to join, they want to do the easy job. And for me, I spoke no Korean when I joined the Korean military. And they just said, they were speaking, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> all right, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, and uh, so I kind of volunteered for a really bad job. Uh, when they said air traffic controller, I thought I'll be in a tower and directing traffic, and I'm like, oh, this is nice air conditioning. Uh, but no, uh, they put me in the mountains and I was directing uh, aircraft uh, in the mountains somewhere and like running up mountains, uh, walking up mountains for two weeks, setting up a little camp, talking on the radio for three days and then walking back down for, you know. So, uh, but one thing that I learned from the military was leadership. Um, and this is, if without the military experience, with that, I wouldn't have learned leadership, I, I believe, to be honest. Um, and the first day I joined the military, uh, after basic training, when I went to my unit, they told me, Aaron, uh, be quiet, just don't talk. Uh, what I want you to do for the next three weeks is look at somebody in my unit, look somebody in the unit that you think is the best leader, and just watch and observe and follow him. And that's what I did for three weeks. So I looked, out of 200 soldiers, I picked my one soldier that I thought was, oh, this, this guy is an awesome leader. And he, just observing him, I think, I learned so much. Um, and I think that includes what I talked about when I was talking about rugby, it kind of all connects. Um, like listening, I think that's the most important part of leadership, is not giving orders, but also actually listening to people, and listening to their ideas, and not just following them, but actually listening to them, and then making a decision based on uh, the information you collect. And I think that's a difference. Uh, a bad leader will just, not listen and make any decision and or just push it through. But I've always, from the military, that one guy, what I learned was he listened. He listened and he never, 50% he, of the time he agreed. But the other 50% of the time, he also disagreed with you. But he explained, he said, right, I understand what you said, but this is why I don't think it's correct. And I think that's what I learned from the military. And this actually led to me staying in Korea. I actually wouldn't have not be here if I did not go to the Korean military. Because I went, I did 26 months, and I said, well, I just wasted two, two years of my life. Um, might as well get something out of this country. So I said, bro, gonna stay here, see what happens. Um, and then, it leads me to this. I became the first Bobsley skeleton uh, jury member. And how this happened was also about experience and everything. I got a phone call from somebody, a friend of mine, and he said, hey, Aaron, do you want to be a bobsleigh skeleton jury? And I said, no. <laughs> and I said, what, what, what's bobsleigh? And he's like, it's a winter sport. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm from Australia, I like the beach. Uh, I, don't, I, don't like, uh, I don't like snow. Um, and for the first time I actually rejected him. Um, and then he called me again two days later. He said, Aaron, okay, seriously, you don't have to be a jury member, but I need to feel some seats. Um, like there's, I need to get 40 people in this class. Can you and your friend, can you bring a friend and come down to sit down for three days and just pretend you 
listen and then go home, we're happy. And I was like, ah, you know what? I'll, I'll go. But you know, I'm not going to sit down and not do anything. Like, I'll go and I'll try my best. Because, like I said, my philosophy is if you're trying something, you might as well do it 100%, not 10%. So I agreed. I went there. Uh, and I tried. And I had the motivation because I said to myself, I'm going to try 100%. And that motivation led me to actually, they, gave, they said, you've got to do a test. And I was like, so I did a test and I came first. And they said, congratulations, now you're a Korean jury. <laughs> and I'm like, awesome, I don't know what that means, but um, because there's no Bobsley skeleton track in Korea. Uh, so I don't know, but great. And then they called me up again and they said, Aaron, would you like to go to the United States for two weeks and get some extra training? And I was like, Ooh. you know, I made a commitment. Uh, but the problem for me was I had a job. So, you know, taking two weeks off and three days off, it, it's actually, it was actually quite difficult. But look, like I said, 100%. Let's go 100%. So, right, went on the plane, told my boss, I'm sorry. He, he was pretty angry. Um, and I kind of lied to him. I said, look, this will probably be the only and last time I'll do this. I actually did this like four or five times later, but anyway. Uh, so, went down to the States uh, and they told me at the beginning, they said, you should have to do some training, that's it. Uh, it's two weeks, I'm having fun training, and then the last day, like, oh, you got to do an exam. <sighs> all right, so study all night, <laughs> because nobody told me about the exam. And then they said, oh, you passed. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that was easy. <laughs> uh, and it is easy. If you guys ever want to be a Bob Slay Skeleton jury member, I can guarantee if you're over 15, you can actually do. It's actually possible. Uh, and the test is in English, so you guys have an advantage there. But anyway, that's how I became a, the first Korean bobsleigh skeleton jury member. It was actually, I went from this, just the first day, the first lesson where I said I came first. And then, this was in March this year, where I am the race director. And it was actually, that's me there, right there, on the left, kind of out of focus, but, um, um, it's, if you told me three years ago that you would be working, uh, you'd be like a bobsleigh jury member, I'll be like, what's bobsleigh? And they'll be like, cool, right? It's like, oh, yeah. no, not, not going to happen. Uh, but that's what happened. And that was because, I think, of my philosophy of, look, it's an experience. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to give 100%. Uh, so uh, basically what I want to wrap up with you guys, and one thing that I want to tell everybody here is, the one thing that I regret from my school life was not taking my opportunities. My school offered so many different opportunities that later I regretted. Um, you guys, by being here today, by virtue of being here today, have grabbed onto a great opportunity. Like, this is going to be a great experience for you guys. And I'm, I'm not going to lie, some of it will be bad. A lot of you guys might, some of you guys will get stressed coming up here giving some presentations, giving speeches. Uh, some of you guys might come up here and give a speech that you didn't think was what you could have achieved. But you will learn something. And I think that's what's important. And I think that's why you know, uh, the teachers here have worked so hard to give you this opportunity because if it be bad or good, you will learn something. And I really hope that you learn something and I'll see you at the Olympics. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for inspiring and um, I would say fun and intriguing speech. We appreciate your coming to the International Young Leaders Forum. Please give our guest speaker once again a big round of applause. So I guess I'm going to sit down here. Yes. Yep. We will now, we will now proceed with the short training session. Um, so we have currently staff members who are holding microphones. So if you guys have questions for our guest speaker, please raise your hand up. And because the stage is yours, Mr. Ong Kim, you have the choice and the right to choose among these people who are holding hands. Um, I, I don't which see any hands. Like? <laughs> so, yes, the stage is yours. So if you guys have questions, any delegates, or even faculty members or principals, if there are any questions, please raise your hand up and our staff members will deliver you the microphone. So are there questions? Yes, thank you. Oh, to the gentleman over there, thank you. Do you think uh, 
After I said, yes, I do believe university is a necessity, but uh, the mistake I made was I chose uh, a degree that I did not want to do. It was uh, my parents, um, being very Korean, wanted me to become a doctor. <laughs> um, and they said, look, if you become a doctor, we'll, like, I will never pester you again in it. Uh, to be honest, I didn't really think I could get the score to go into the degree that I wanted to anyway. Um, and that was probably the biggest mistake, that's why it was the biggest mistake I made. Uh, but I did learn a lot of good things in university. It's not just the academic life, but the social aspect also. Um, and just the networking. Um, so I 150% uh, agree with going to university. Thank you. I uh, really enjoy watching and playing sports, and I'm planning to have a job related to sports when I grow up. Do you think I need to major in like sports, whatever, like management or things in university, or I can just make, like major in what I want to study and then get a job?